DarrowChain.com. All right, today we're going to be taking a look at something different, um, not really a, a gadget per se, but uh, some software. And in particular, it's Avatron's Air Display software. And what it really does is allows you to use an iPad as a second display, which is kind of cool. So a lot of times, um, usually packing this device, my 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro, and use an iPad of some sort. Now this is my mom's iPad. It's an older iPad 3, uh, so it's non-retina, uh, and we're gonna basically use as a second monitor uh, using this Avatron Air Display software. So let's let's get started. Now what's really kind of cool about it is that the software allows you to not only use it uh, via a cable if you wanted to, uh, but also via Wi-Fi. So let's uh, let's start this up. So th there's two parts of it. There is uh, the application you buy on the App Store, and well, I actually have it running already. And there is a client that you would get to download uh, and install on your Mac or, or Windows. Now, my understanding is that Air Display 3 is only available for the iOS platform. And so if you're going to do this on, on a Windows machine, which I'll demo in a separate video, uh, you have to use Air Display 2 for that. So let's, um, let's uh, make sure start this up properly here. Okay, so the client runs uh, uh, and is part of the uh, top menu bar here. And if I run the software, and if I'm Wi-Fi, it picks up an IP address and it shows you it's waiting for a computer. So let's see if we can find it here. And it hasn't found anything yet. Oh, hold on. I just ran that. Sometimes it doesn't pick up right away via Wi-Fi. So I'm going to quit the program and I'm going to run it again and see if it'll find it. And here we are. Run that. And yep, now they see it sees it. Now you can set this up to automatically connect uh, if you want to, but I didn't. So I'm going to manually connect. And once I hit that, you see that the software is set up as, as a mirror. So it's mirroring both displays right now. But that's not all that handy. Uh, I'd rather have it if, as a extended. So we'll go to the system preferences because once the, once the client is connected to it, the software behaves as if it was a, a secondary monitor hooked up. And so the OS X's display arrangement software here, you can actually turn the mirrors off and then you can distribute displays as you see fit. So you can see the red outline. And next, this is pretty exactly how I want it. So I can position it a little bit and I'm ready to go. So I can close that down. I can bring up a browser, for example. I'll bring up uh, my horribly unupdated blog, for example. And I can just basically drag it across to the side here. Now, via Wi-Fi, it's a little laggy, um, I have noticed. It's, uh, depending on what you're doing, it can be kind of a problem. Uh, just because the, the lag can be, uh, can be a bit jarring. But that's via Wi-Fi. So your signal strength and your signal, uh, you know, where you are, are you located in relation to where your Wi-Fi router is will kind of depend on how well this responds. But let's, let's actually use the cable as with the cable at least I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get better performance so uh, the software I found can get kind of confused if you're uh, if you're pulling things in and out so I'm going to quit out of this I'll quit out of the client and this will kind of uh, says it's paused and I'm going to quit out of the client here so that we'll get everything back to kind of a, of a baseline here and I'll quit out the client here. So quit out, out of that. All right, so let's go hook up the cable. Okay, so right up here, I'm gonna sneak it around the back of my display so it doesn't get in the way. Plug that in. All right, I got the little beep that's found something. Of course, my photos decided to run, which I don't really care about. All right, so now we're going to run the air display software and we're going to run the client or the host here and see if it picks up. All right, looks like it did. All right, and you can see from here, it says that it's my mom's iPad via USB connection. So I found it up nicely. And now I can see that same action of dragging things across is a lot more responsive than it was before. So it's kind of kind of neat to be able to do that. So it's kind of cool. So this is really nice to be able to have your iPad be used as, as a display. Now, the nice thing about it is it's not just kind of a plain display. You can actually interact with it. So for example, if I were to maximize this, I can, I can use my fingers to kind of touch. Now the touch isn't really 
touch, it actually is just emulating the mouse pointer. So as I click here, I tap here, it's kind of clicking on the various spots of the, of the browser. So I can reload, I can click on uh, these, op these items in my menu bar. So I'm going to have to revisit my blog. Horrible, it's horribly out of date. But um, you get the idea that, that basically you know, it, it's just another web view that you can kind of tap with. So it's not completely dumb. And it has some, some functionality where you can click. So it's kind of handy also for presentation purposes as well. So the nice thing I, I like to be able to do, do th with things I like to do with this, though, is, what, what, um, is to basically move over here. I can bring up, say, the developer tools. When I'm programming, it's really kind of kind of a, oops. I go to the more tools, developer tools, and go here. I can basically drag them over here, and this is great for helping me debug things. So as if I'm working with a with an editor on this side of the screen, tapping away, I can take a look, run the editors here. I can run the DOM explorer, and take a look at different things, uh, look at source code. It's really kind of cool to be able to have it that way. So, so that, that's a that's a so let's look at using the, the regular iPad. Now, the software does have the ability to use an iPad Retina, a uh, Retina Display iPad, like an iPad Air 2. So I happen to have one. So let's take a look and see how that works. So here we have my iPad Air 2 over here. So uh, same same setup I had last time. So I'm going to go run this thing via Wi-Fi. So first things first, I'm going to run the Air Display 3 client over here. All right, so it's got my IP address. I'm going to go here and run the host program. And let's see if it figures it out. Where let's see. Well, it doesn't look like it didn't look like it found it. So let's see here. So via Wi-Fi, I have found it's a little on the fickle side. Um, oh, oh, there it is. I see it. There it is. It actually did see it. And now I can see if I can connect to it. And uh, maybe. Yep, there we are. Okay, so it's connected. So now, one thing you can do is uh, right now the software is mirroring my display, as you can see here. Uh, it seems I've lost my developer tools that I had running before. Let's see if I can find them again. Uh, let's see, developer tools. There they are. They're kind of messed up. Let me just close them then. Uh, if I can get to them. I'm not sure. It didn't it didn't like something. Let me just quit out of Chrome. Let's see if it'll pick up here again. Run Chrome. All right, so so we see that crossing over between the two works okay. Now this is via Wi-Fi, so that's it looks like the signal here is a bit better. Uh, maybe just because the Air, iPad Air 2's Wi-Fi is a bit better than the iPad 3, so it's actually handling it quite nicely. Uh, so obviously. When you're looking at this right now, this is not in retina mode. It's actually scaled. Uh, and so what we want to see is the option here. If you go to the preferences, you can actually turn on re use retina resolutions. And when you do that, apply it, you notice that suddenly my desktop is really small there. Now, as you see, there it is. That's a massive difference. The the issue right now is that because it's trying to manage a screen that's big, it can get kind of pokey sometimes, but it's actually doing quite well sometimes. I've seen it get really pokey before, but it seems like it's doing a pretty decent job. But actually, oh, my mouse cursor just froze up. Oh, there you go. So it's a little on the on the inconsistent side with performance-wise, but that sort of works. Uh, I'm going to go hook up the cable now, though, just because I want to I want to remove any potential for the you know, being Wi-Fi causing a problem. So we'll close this down real quick. And just to be on the safe side, we'll quit the client over here, hit the quit the host over here. And just to make sure, quit out of that. I'll quit out of it over here. Toss that. And we're going to hook it up. I'll use this USB cable on this side of my Mac. So I'll take that, plug it in over here. There we go. All right, so now it's plugged in. And so now what we can do is we can run the client again. And then we will run the host program. Get rid of that. There we go. All right, so now I found it. 
And so we can see that it's uh, my iPad, Dower's iPad, and the USB connection. So now, once again, we have we see the the Retina resolutions here. It is ridiculously small. Um, so your mileage will vary depending on how you want to, if you actually find this useful or not. The text is very hard to see because it's so small. But of course, you know, if you're just browsing around, you can always increase it with the zoom factors to get it in there. So you can run it, run it in Retina. Um, usefulness wise, I don't know. I'm not sure how useful it is having this r r ridiculously <laughs> super you know, tiny sized font, but yeah, you know, I, I suppose someone will find a use for it somewhere. So, and uh, it's a little on the slower side, but it's not bad. It's not bad. It still handles it quite well. So it's nice to be able to have that option available for you uh, if you have an iPad Air 2 or a Retina enabled iPad. All right, so one test that I've been kind of playing with uh, with the Air Display software is whether or not it can handle two iPads. Uh, and let's go, I've had hit or misses with it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, so it's a little on the fickle side. But let's go try it again for this video, and let's see if I can get both of them to, to run. So here we are. I have my iPad 3 up here. Here's my iPad Air 2 and my MacBook Pro. Uh, and... Uh, I decided to hook them up via cables, so the cables are there. And once again, I, I'm going to forego doing the Wi-Fi. I think you can do it, uh, but doing two iPads, I've had some problems with. But sometimes when it, it does work, and it's kind of neat when it does work. So let's try it out. So first things first, we will run the the Air Display software on both these guys, and then now we're going to run the the host and see what happens. And, oh, it died. So, I'm not sure exactly what happened over there. It uh, crashed on me. And, oh, 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 I tried it again and it crashed. Alright, let's just quit out of these here. Oh, I was hoping to be able to do this. Sometimes it does work. Let's see. It's So now it sees them both via that way and then it still crashed. Well, let's quit out of this again. Alright, let's try the reverse. I'm going to run the client first, the host first, and see if I can, let's just close these out. All right. Okay, so I've got the host running, and now I'm going to run this top one first. And so it finds that. All right, good. Now let's run this one. And it finds that. All right, sort of. Uh, I'm a little confused right now. Let's uh, go to the system preferences and see how the arrangement is. Whoa. Oh, it's mirrored. Oh, okay. So it's sort of mirrored it. Now, this is kind of weird, though. You notice that there's a bar across here. Looks like the top menu uh, replicated to the bottom, which is kind of weird. It looks like it came across this way. Let's just see if it can turn the, the change the arrangement so that's not mirrored. Or, hmm, it's not mirrored at all. There's that one. Then there's this one, which is right there. Okay, and then there's this one. Okay, so it looks like I kind of got it working. All right, so I'll close that down. So let's see. Oh, there we go. So you can see that I got my displays running. So that's kind of cool. So I got it working. So it it two two iPads tend to be a little more on the more tricky side to get working sometimes, but when it is working, it's kind of neat. So I have my Retina resolution one over here. I can open a new window. Move this one up here. And then a new window over here. I can move it over here. So there you have it. So that's kind of cool. So all right, I got it working. So it's great. So this is really neat. So if you have, if you happen to find yourself with a uh, a Mac, a MacBook Pro or something, and two iPads with cables, or maybe with the Wi-Fi if you feel lucky, uh, you can get it working this way. So it's kind of cool. So it's really kind of neat. So it's something you can do with uh, some some iPads, get some extra use of an older iPad if you've moved up to a, a newer one, and uh, you know, well, something that you can have lying around and make some you know make some use out of it so you can use it for debugging auxiliary windows uh, a little extra productivity boost for for your mac so there you have it a look at air display by by uh, avatron and uh you know their their client air display 3 on an ipad 3 ipad air 2 and um we'll look at it later on another video on the windows side see how well it works but uh, if you have any questions about this let me know uh please subscribe Thanks for watching.